Well, this is the aftermath. Monday morning. Yeah, Monday, Monday. And some of the people have already left. Others are packing up Sue and Candy. They're returning to the hot, hot parts of Arizona, way south. I'll see them hopefully when I get down that way for Holland at the Moon. A lot of work in cleaning up, you know. Um, we had a great movie night last night right there with the movie screen. And everything's clean. And, and our hostess, Aja, is working hard cleaning up her homestead. Getting it all ready for t the last night or tonight. Or She never stops when she's here. Just so you know, guys, she's constantly going, doing something here on her property. Constantly. There's always something to do or a project to, that she has to work on, watering the her garden. Yeah, but Moo Moo, she's having a lazy day. Working, working, working day and night. Hey everybody, got my little flashlight. And uh, as you could tell, the sun has gone down. Well, you can see it, the sunset. Look how pretty it is in the background. Look at that. Isn't that pretty? Yeah. I'm headed over to Aja's. I'm parked over there where you see that light over there. And I'm going all the way over to Aja's, which is all the way over there where those lights are. So I am getting exercise. I'd like to park over by Sue and Ed's in case I need to run my generator. But um, my solar has been so great with my new rig and my brother setting everything up for me that I didn't even have to take my generator out of my van. I'm hoping that soon I won't have to carry it with me at all. Wouldn't that be great? But um, anyway, so I'm walking over to Center Camp. And this is going to be my last night. Oh, somebody's coming in over there. Anyway, um, I'm going over to Center, Center Camp. And we're going to have a campfire. This will be my last campfire here for the season. Because I'm leaving in the morning. And I'm headed south. Not sure if that's a great idea because it's like a hundred and something down there. But I am going to go to an RV park that is part of my trails collection um, membership for Thousand Trails. And that's what I'm going to do tomorrow. So I'll be down in the Yuma area. And I love going to Yuma. It's one of my favorite places because I love going to Mexico. So... Whew, I'm getting a little out of breath. I w went and said my goodbyes to Ed and Sue, and I appreciate them letting me stay at the scrapyard, which is my favorite place. They saved that spot for me because <laughs> I like it. So, oh, somebody's walking. Who is it? Oh, is it Jeff? Bruce. Oh, hi, Bruce. How are you doing? Good, how are you? Good. Hey everybody, I'm on my way out. I'm going to be leaving this beautiful place here. Uh, the Lost Boys the Lost Boys Ranch and Nomad Ranch. Uh, truly a nomad land and awesome hospitality on all the landowners here that is a group of people that all met in this wonderful life of travel, yeah. So, um, you know, it was a great time and I got to hang out with, you know, some wonderful people. We had so much fun and I'm got, got everything all ready to go. Danny's on my side, but I'm going to stop by at base camp and say goodbye to those I didn't get to say goodbye to and say goodbye to our hostess, Aja. I already stopped and said goodbye to... 
um, Sue and Ed. Sue and Ed from Nomad Ranch. Landlords, my landlords of the Nomad Ranch scrapyard, which I love staying at. It's like being in the stock, you know, you heard of the stockyards of Chicago? Well, this is the scrapyard. I like to stay over here. Uh, it's kind of secluded. And if I do need to run my generator, it doesn't bother anybody. But as Ed kept reminding me the whole time I was here, you know, it's one eighth of a mile walk up to Aja's place. Um, so I have stayed at Aja's place um, on her property, but um, when you need to run your generator sometimes, you know, I, it's all about being conscientious of other people, I think. So if I can stay over here and not bother anybody, that's great. But it turns out I didn't even need to. I never ran my generator once. Thank you, my dear, wonderful brother. So I'm on the way and gonna say goodbye. There's Rady. The key when you're driving in these desert areas is to go slow. Don't go hauling ass through it, you know? Go just drive slow. like we just get started and before you know it comes a time that we have to say so long thank you for such a wonderful time pandemonium aja and everybody see you down south and see you down the road
know what they say, Arizona skies, yeah, they're beautiful. So I'm one, I'm at Salome Road. Okay, it's 104 degrees and we're back to basics here. We're boondocking, I'm at Roadrunner and um, in Quartzsite and I'm here just for the night. I just got in after leaving Williams. Um, so, you know, it's really hot. A lot of people, you know, they might've moved on but they stayed up north. Me, I was like, well, I have my thousand trails and um, I booked a reservation so I can get into a park here in Yuma with air where I can hook up and I can have air conditioning, um, you know, and even though it's in the hundreds. So I made my way down here and it took a little bit longer than I expected, you know, with stopping and taking a, getting a bathroom break for Danny and uh, getting uh, fuel for the for the van, you know, so we would get here. And oh, it is, it's hot. Uh, so, um, so it's kind of like back to basics, the way it was in the old days when you first started, you know, you kind of felt like you didn't have a whole lot of things. You didn't have solar, you didn't have your little, you know, power stations, you know, and you were just winging it, you know? That's what it reminds me of. Because I'm rolling in here and it's pitch black, dark, and I'm trying to find a place to park, but I can't see a freaking thing. <laughs> it's so dark out here, I can't see anything, even with my brights on, you know. So, anyway, uh, I stopped over at the Chevron when you first get off of um, I-10. And, um, and I will not take I-17 again. I did not like I-17. I don't like the 6% uh, um, downgrading you know, travels with the trailer behind me. I, I don't like that, you know. Um, I mean, I have brakes on my trailer, which is great. I have a brake controller, but it's still with all the semis on the road and that, I would just, I don't know why I just didn't take 95. I don't know. It was crazy. I've never taken 17 before. And I thought, well, maybe I would stop in Sedona, but it was just too hot. It was to stop and I just came straight here. Yeah. So, um, I was going to maybe go into um, the uh, LTVA, but it was too dark when I got here. And even coming here to Roadrunner, I couldn't really see where I was going to even see where to pull in. It was so dark, you know. I don't like rolling in that when it's that dark. I like to roll in when it's light out, you know. So I could see where I'm going. Especially because it's really dark in the desert. So that's one thing you just want to get in here when it's before it gets pitch black. And it gets can get pitch black by 7 or 8 o'clock at night. You know? So we stopped and we got some water because we just needed enough water to, so we could, cont we could flush. You know, so we flush the toilet or wash, you know, brush our teeth, my teeth or whatever in the morning. Um, I have water, bottled water for Danny and I to drink and um, oh, there's a fly in here that's driving her crazy. Look, she's trying to catch it. Look at her. Where is it? Did you get it? Where is it? Get it. Get it. Did you get it? Where is it? Where'd it go? That fly's about to die. Yeah, she's about to kill that fly. But um, so... The drive wasn't bad, but I just didn't like 17. I, I, I really prefer to take um, 95. So, we're here. I do have a little Caesar salad I bought at the gas station. And I'm going to eat that. And uh, try to just lay still and stay cool until the morning. You know, I hope. So, that's what we're going to do. I am uh, 
charging up my little fan a little bit. These are the best things I, I ever bought, these fans from um, Amazon, because I can charge them with uh, USB. And I have this little charger that I'm charging it with, I just so I don't have to turn on my inverter, because if I want to make sure my refrigerator, it doesn't have to work overtime because of the heat, you know. So, um, even though I've been driving all day, or most of the day. So I'll see you in the morning. Okay, so I spent the night here at Roadrunner. I almost couldn't see it in the dark, but I did get in here. I passed it. I was like, where's the entrance? It's funny how you go someplace all the time and as soon as it gets dark, pitch black out, you can't see a darn thing. It is 104, according to my car. Very hot. It's 99 in the camper. And on our way to Yuma, it's so hot. All we did was brush our teeth, wash our, just wash our face. Daddy went pee. Whoops, Danny went pee and uh, heading out of here. If you're coming to Quartzite, I would stay high levels until this heat wave is over. Unless you're going to be someplace where you have air conditioning. Even though it's, there's no humidity here, it's still freaking hot. <laughs> you know? And, um, It can be debilitating if you're not in the right health, especially when you're a senior citizen or if you have a compromising illness. <laughs> so we're back on the road this morning. Hello, mountains. Good morning, mountains. Look at this, they paved the they paved the road to Yuma. It doesn't start till you get to the Yuma proving grounds, but wow, look how nice the road is. Nice and smooth, not bumpy. I'm sure it's really hot because it's a bit of asphalt, but you know. I hope it doesn't buckle up in this horrible heat because it looks like they just did it. Started September, from September to October 11th. It says that they're working on it. Nice and smooth. Pleasant ride the rest of the way. So it's 107 degrees out here. And they've got the traffic stopped. For unknown reason. It looks like it's stopped in both directions. They're not letting anybody come in and they're not letting anybody go in. Don't know why. And it's, you know, like 11 o'clock in the morning. And you can see they got cones up there so people can't come towards us, you know, going towards Quartzite. These old guys, they're standing outside their car talking. Who knows? Well, they're letting people come through headed towards Quartzite now.
hopefully it won't be long and it'll be our turn. So we got to go through and we went like a few miles and now they got us slowing down again. It's now 108 out here on the highway. They're putting up a whole bunch of fencing all along. 95 and they're fixing the road putting down striping and paving and all kinds of stuff the road's back to the old normal way it was they didn't do it all the way to Yuma not yet at least who knows It's still there. The cannons are still there. And we're back to a nice new road again. Coming up here, oops, on the right hand side of the road, there's this little bitty, there's a little bitty chapel. It's way in the distance over there. I'll see if I can zoom up on it. It's over by that stack of hay. It's a small this church. Bitty bitty little church. And you can stop and pray if you need to. If you feel like you need to. Or just go and visit. It's called the Praise rest worship. That's what the sign. You can stop there to praise, you can stop there to rest, or you can just stop there to worship. It's kind of cool. I went in there and did a video on it way back in the day when I first came out here to Yuma. We are here. And I'll tell you what, if you can see, it's like empty. I hope I got a good spot. I already know my spot number. It's so hot though. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and pull in and get situated. My car says 113. That's not what the temperature says on my phone, but the car says 113. Of course, I'm sure that I have a spot with no sun. I mean, with no shade. Like, this one would be nice right here because it's got a little shade. A little reprieve. But no, nope. I know she didn't give me that. Time to get settled in. Looks, Looks like, like we, we made, made it. it. 